Plastic bags are banned in New York. Oh, wait. Okay. Well, kind of. The goal of the ban is to keep 23 billion single-use carry-out plastic bags out of landfill each year and to decrease plastic litter around the state and in our waterways. But with several exceptions for certain plastic bags and research on the unintended environmental consequences of these bans, I want to know, are plastic bag bans sustainable? I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. Don't get me wrong, there are a ton of environmental benefits to plastic bag bans. For one, these bans decrease litter. The city of San Jose saw an 89% reduction in plastic bags in their storm drains and a 60% reduction of plastic litter in their creeks and rivers after instituting its plastic bag ban and fee. Secondly, these bag bans can reduce demand for fossil fuels. By one estimate, in the coming decades, about 2.2 million barrels of oil will go towards making single-use plastics globally each day. So reducing single-use plastic bag use will reduce oil use. And finally, bans protect recycling infrastructure. New York's Department of Environmental Conservation surveyed multiple recycling facilities in the state, and they reported a range of costs between $300,000 to $1 million annually to deal with plastic bags caught in the recycling systems. But these bans aren't perfect, and the alternatives to plastic bags have their own environmental consequences. One study looked at the life cycle of paper bags, a common replacement for plastic bags, and they found they have a higher carbon footprint than thin plastic bags. In fact, you need to use a paper bag three times before its carbon footprint is equal to that of a single-use plastic bag. Thin plastic bags do really well in life cycle assessments because they're so thin, there's just not much material there, so they have a low carbon footprint. Dr. Rebecca Taylor is a researcher and economist who has studied the unintended consequences of these plastic bag bans. However, paper bags do biodegrade, so if they do end up as litter, then the paper bag can be better. If they all go to the landfill, then you would, you would prefer the thinnest bag possible. In her research, Rebecca found that after California's plastic bag ban, plastic waste decreased by 40 million pounds. But small garbage bag sales rose by 120%. When people no longer could reuse their grocery bags as garbage bags, they had to start buying these garbage bags. Purchases of garbage bags increased the most for people who have pets, people who have little children, babies, and buy diapers, as well as discount shoppers, people who are more frugal and thus are probably more likely to be reusing these bags more to save money than necessarily to be green. Would you still argue that having a policy like this in place is good for the environment? It depends on the metric that you're concerned with. When we look at who's implementing these type of regulations, they tend to be in coastal areas or areas where there's waterways. Plastic litter is particularly costly if you have waterways that can be clogged by these type of materials. If you're in an area without a waterway, then potentially you have less of a concern of the litter itself, in which case you might worry more about the carbon footprint. It's a balancing act between two different types of environmental metrics. And that's why, you know, there's not necessarily one solution for everyone. Talking to Rebecca made me realize that these bag bands are complicated, but we're getting one in New York March 1st. So I've come to the launch of our bag ban with the Department of Sanitation, and we're gonna be learning how it's going to work. What has been the response from the community? It's been very good, and I always say this, we come from mostly here is African American and Caribbean or, or Latino background, and in their countries, they don't have plastic bags, or if you're gonna have a plastic bag, you have to ask for it outright. So the community's been doing a really good job of being able to transition out of it. So on March 1st, the state has banned plastic bags, so you will no longer be able to get one at your local grocery store. There is a fee in New York City on single-use paper bags. We really wanna make sure that that we're getting reusable bags to everyone so that they don't need to pay it. I've seen some research that paper bags have a bigger carbon footprint than plastic because they're heavier. Are you worried that people will just replace the plastic bag with paper and then we'll have another issue? I think that what we're really focused on and why the council decided to implement the fee was to discourage that. Okay, this fee needs a bit of an explanation. Part of New York's plastic bag ban allows cities and counties to elect to add a five cent fee on all paper takeout bags. This is actually good because there's some evidence that these fees make bag bans more effective. This point was proven after Chicago enacted a plastic bag ban in 2015. Lawmakers banned all plastic bags thinner than 2.25 thousandths of an inch, which if you can believe it, is the distance between these two points. Yeah, 
it's impossible to see. It is so thin. Any plastic bag thinner than this was banned. Everything thicker was allowed. So instead of cutting down on bags, stores just started giving customers thicker plastic bags. And this well-meaning Chicago law ended up causing residents to use more plastic. In response to that debacle, Chicago repealed the bag ban and enacted a seven cent tax on all single-use bags, no matter the material or thickness. Because of this tax, the city saw single-use bag use go down by 33%. Here in New York, our new law bans all plastic bags thinner than 10 thousandths of an inch, which is about four times thicker than what Chicago banned. Policymakers tell me this is thick enough to prevent what happened in Chicago. As of this recording, only three counties in New York have adopted a fee, New York City, Tompkins, and Suffolk counties. In the areas with no fee, there is a risk that people will just start using paper bags when they check out. And like Rebecca pointed out earlier, paper has its own environmental issues. Also, I should add that these fees do not apply for people on assistance programs like SNAP or WIC. I know there's also some bags that are exceptions, like takeout bags. Mm -hmm. Why did you all have to make exceptions for the law? Really, we want to get to a place where we don't need to do that, but just practically, like, we want to make sure when we ask people to change behavior, that it's something that they can actually do. In New York, lawmakers decided to make exceptions where they felt there was no alternative to plastic bags. A classic example is the pet store owner that sells goldfish. There's just no way you can put goldfish in a paper bag and bring that home and not have them flopping around on your car seat. These exceptions include plastic bags that wrap meat and fish, sliced food and newspapers, as well as restaurant takeout orders and dry cleaning. The law also exempts trash bags and Ziploc bags. It sounds like reusable bags is the way to go to really make this ban as sustainable and effective as possible. Absolutely. We really want to make sure that folks have the tools to do the right thing and we've tried to design something that makes it easy every day. It's obvious that these plastic bag bans are not a silver bullet for pollution or climate change, but they're definitely a step in the right direction. So if you live in a community with a van, or even if you don't, bring your own bag. It's a great one small step, and if we all do it, it will make a big difference. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please share it, and we'll see you next time. Got my, my reusable bag, and look where it's gonna go. I'm just gonna do a little carabiner situation, so I'll be prepared. <laughs> my hands are cold. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, ready to go.